Today, Saltwater Fishing University, we got a special one for you today. Special guest, we love special guests. And of course, we're continuing to spend money before the big season. Because in the last video, we talked about, we had to replace these bad mama jamas, these ugly, crusty old after coolers we have. And of course, I didn't know what they were. So we're gonna talk about what they are in this video and what will happen if you don't replace them. And then we're gonna show you the time-lapse of them getting replaced. That's gonna be super, super cool. We've got Chris Diggs from Diggs Diesel. This is gonna be great. And now let's learn about after coolers. friends in our last video we talked about that big old repair that we have on speechless that's come up and in fact we're doing it today with this guy chris diggs from diggs diesel we think he's the man and he was nice enough to get all hollywood for us today so thank you for that chris sure so let's talk about after coolers right because i'm a dummy now, those watching this might not be nearly as uninformed as me. I didn't know there was such a thing as an aftercooler, but I know when we were looking at boats, I was constantly seeing talk of just replace the aftercoolers. So let's break them down. What does the aftercooler actually do? Because on this table here, we've got a new one, we've got the old ones. Yeah. And so we're going to explain why we took something that was working and we have made the repair. Aftercooler is a maintenance item on the engine. Yep. It takes the hot air from the turbo okay. that's created with boost, cools it down with salt water, and packs in more oxygen molecules into the engine and makes a bigger boom. Makes a big boom. Because we have that boom, we have what? Power. We have power. Right. So the aftercoolers are fundamental to the power of our diesel engines. That's right. All modern diesel engines use saltwater aftercoolers because of the horsepower they're trying to get out of these engines. You're packing more air in, you can put more fuel in, you can burn more fuel. More air makes more means power. more fuel, which means more power. I like That's that. Right. I power. like the power. I feel that one. <laughs> okay, good. Now, so when it comes to these units, let's talk about the uh, the mistakes that people make with them. I mean, you mentioned to me, there was this one fellow that you knew that had his nice boat and he didn't even know that he had an after cooler, much less had to fix it. So, or yeah. had to service it. So when do we service it? Why do we service it? How does it work? The common mistake is forgetting about it. Yeah. Not even paying any attention to it. Um, most all manufacturers are on every two year, uh, Pull out, clean, test, reseal. So clean, test, reseal every two years, every two years with yeah. your after cooler, okay? Yep, and uh, some manufacturers like Caterpillar's one says replace them every six years. Um, Just replace the whole thing every six years no matter what, Yep, is what Cat says. And uh, Yanmar doesn't have a spec on replacing, but uh, you know when you inspect them, that's where you gotta be very vigilant as to what you see and then test them to you know, double the pressure that they see and that should hold up fine for you. Yeah, so you tested these, right? So our boat was running fine, but you looked at this and said, I think y'all could have some yeah. problems with these aftercoolers. I saw this sealant in here. So, and that's from the last guy who was probably in this. And he had a hard time getting this to seal. And when you have a hard time getting that to seal, yep. that means this coating has broken down. Yep. And now it's, it's wonky. It's not wanting to seal right. You got pits. It and is pretty funky it is. it's looking pretty rough and we even got what looks like some type of oyster formation happening inside <laughs> of our after cooler from this i mean that's it this thing <laughs> this thing looks pretty janky and so if we don't replace this now what could go wrong you could have one of these tubes fail in here okay and then you're dumping salt water into the intake and so start. one of these tubes here fails we're up a creek yeah, you're buying an engine. We're buying an engine because it's now going to take salt water in. Yep, she's going to start breathing salt water. She's going to breathe it. And then eventually, you know, it'll get worse and worse and worse. And you'll see high blow by it, wear the rings out, wear the cylinders out. Yeah. And in worst case, a hydro lock. But most of the time, it's a slow process. So how many engines have you seen 
just since you've had Diggs Diesel, which again, Diggs Diesel, awesome. <laughs> How many engines have you had to replace simply because somebody hadn't done what they should have done with their after coolers? We probably had about a dozen and um, maybe not replace the engine, but definitely overhaul them. Yeah. And uh, it, it's hard on the, the valves and the cylinder head. You get that salt water mist in there, it rusts up the valves, rusts up the seats. It's uh, salt water is hard on everything. And when you're putting it this close to an engine, you got to take care of it. You better take care of it. So this is getting rid of that mist that can cause problems yep. with everything else. That's completely, you know, you're replacing it. So you know you got a brand new one right here. Yep. They're expensive, but you know what you got. So let's talk about the expense because they, they, you're right, they're not cheap. So this bad boy here was $4,500, right? Yep. $4,500 per unit, and that's obviously gonna vary. So if somebody's watching this and say, oh, no, I seen one, no, I know you've seen one for more or less than that, I don't. Okay, so this was $4,500, and they weigh, how much these? They're, they're stout. Good grief, I'm talking, this weighs a lot. So the shipping was expensive. In fact, shipping was like at least $300, I think, for the unit or something. It was, it was, it was $500. $500. $500 to ship two units. $500 to ship two units. Here's the box that they came in. So not small, not cheap, like everything on a boat. That being said, here's a new guy and it's gonna take you how long roughly to replace this? Um, I'll, I'll probably have it on in a few hours. Few hours. Yep. And maybe we'll even get a time lapse. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because we're high tech around here. All right, good stuff. So we got $4,500 for the unit. We've got the shipping, and this is for each engine, of course. But doing this hopefully is going to give us longevity on our engines. And by the way, our engines are 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I they bet just. That's the original after That's the original after cooler. So this is overdue. The issue was, is the boat didn't run for a period of time. It was dry docked. And so because of that, these just sat. And I think it just, you know, diesels want to run, they man. Do. Setting A boat setting is very hard on them. Yeah, yeah, not good. Very hard on them. Not good. All right, so let's get these bad boys replaced. And then I think we are tip top shape, ready to go for an amazing charter year and so if you're watching this now and you own a diesel engine make sure you do the work do the maintenance this way this guy doesn't have to come to you and say i'm sorry but it's a complete repair job right you'd rather best cure for anything is prevention so that's why we're putting these bad boys in we're excited to see you in Nags Head this summer at Pirates Cove. Again, slip number 92. Me and the professor are going to be there. But again, we want to thank you, Chris Diggs, for being a dang good fella and great at your job. And let's, uh, let's now see if we can get these things replaced.